even though it feels like it happened months ago at this point, I do want to talk about last week's RNC convention, specifically the big gay elephant in the room, pun intended, because the whole gay Republican phenomenon never ceases to amuse me. And this year, as many of you know by now, the funniest thing ever happened. So in a viral tweet by the Halfway Post, they say an executive of the gay dating app Grinder says the Republican National Convention is basically Grinder's Super Bowl. Yeah. Now, as funny as this is, I am sad to report that this is not actually true an executive of grinder did not actually say this the halfway post is a satirical account for those who don't know but nobody really questioned it because this is actually very believable which is the best kind of satire in fact this has been a running joke for the longest time even before grinder became as popular as it is for example during the 2012 rnc convention the onion another satirical outlet famously released a report about how male sex workers in tampa bay were gearing up for a flood of business since that's where they were holding the rnc convention last year. The average Tampa area prostitute normally makes around two to three hundred dollars a week jerking off truck drivers behind the bus station. I see. Next week they are expecting to make about 30 times that amount sucking off secretly gay Republicans. Wow. See what I mean? So this has been a meme for a really long time, but it's based on a kernel of truth. Now, when it comes to this year's convention in Milwaukee, a lot of people wasted no time making fun of closeted Republicans, including gay Republicans like George Santos, who released the following video after seeing that tweet from the halfway post. Grinder executives are calling the RNC convention the Grinder Super Bowl. Folks, look, I'm openly gay no qualms about it. Proud conservative Republican. I met my husband on Grinder, and we've been together for six years going on seven. Married for almost three. Let me tell you something. Just come out the closet, boys. Come on. It's fun. You can be gay and conservative. But look, Grinder's already out of you anyway based on the hits. And guess who's in town? It's all you conservatives. Bye. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but him trolling Republicans constantly has been really entertaining. Uh, I don't want to give him a compliment, but I'm enjoying the content post-congressional career. Now, we're going to talk about why Republicans don't want to come out of the closet in a moment. You probably already know why. But, you know, even though the post that started this entire debacle was satirical, it did seem to turn into a self-fulfilling prophecy after reports emerged that there was a spike in usage in Milwaukee to the point that it actually led to temporary outages, according to Down Detector. Now, Grinder itself hasn't reported any issues since May, according to the Milwaukee Journal. So these reports are not confirmed. There could have been outages, could have not been. I don't know. With that being said, there is anecdotal evidence to suggest that there was a surge of users on Grinder in Milwaukee. Rachel Bernard reports, one user in Milwaukee said there has been a major bump in anonymous users. On any given day, you'll go on there and see a headless torso or a blank profile, said the source, who did not want to be named. He explained that profile typically means a user is looking for a fling and not a relationship. The Grinder user said on a normal day, you'd encounter maybe 10 users with no profile photo, but Thursday, when he checked the app he said he stopped counting at 50 blank profile photos holy shit if that's the case it aligns with grinder activity during previous national convention so get this after the 2016 rnc in cleveland a vice article that cited sources from grinder said the area around the 2016 convention's main hub saw user traffic increase by 66 percent so close to 69 other grinder hotspots like times square capitol hill disneyland and south beach florida saw no comparable increase in user traffic at the time, the article said. So even though the original post that started this whole rumor was satirical, you know, it did end up being at least relatively true. Now, the B-roll that you saw during the article that I was reading to you was from a user who claimed to be near the convention in Milwaukee, and he was kind of confirming by scrolling through his grinder that there was a surge in users in that particular area, although I can't independently verify whether or not that person was actually in Milwaukee and being truthful, nor can I confirm that down detector outages were real because people have gotten really good at shitposting, so you kind of have to second guess everything that you see on the internet. Still, I think it's reasonable to to deduce that there was some Republican on Republican action at this year's Milwaukee convention. Now, not all Republicans keep their homosexuality on the down low, obviously, but it's obvious why most of them do by now. Because, you know, queer people, they got another reminder that this party 
they just don't really fuck with queer people. For example, meet Charles T. Moron, excuse me, Moran, my bad. Uh, this is the president of the uh, Leopards Eating People's Faces Party. No, 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 that's wrong. He's the president of the Log Cabin Republicans, which is a gay Republican group. Now, he excitedly tweeted out, quote, it's official the national GOP platform has been stripped of all anti-LGBT language, inclusion one, thank you, real Donald Trump. Now, take a wild guess as to how fellow Republicans responded to that news. Just try to imagine the things that they might say to a gay Republican. It was expectedly bad. LGBTQ Nation shared some examples, and it was brutal. For example, one person said, you are a disgusting pedophile. Another said, does this inclusion include pedophiles? Another person saying that they're a pedophile, pedophile sodomite, we don't want you, find God and leave the party. This person says, that's not a good thing, you disgusting homo. Uh, this person says, so glad we're committed to conserving sodomy. Yeah, lots of sodomy going on at the RNC convention, apparently, but you know, you get the point by now. Once again, and you have Republicans going out of their way to let a gay Republican know that they are not welcome in the party. And this isn't just, you know, from a few shit posters on Twitter. Republican politicians and pundits constantly make it very clear that these types of folks are not welcome in the party. Yet, this guy still wants to be part of the party that hates his guts. Now, the sad part is that what he's saying isn't even true they didn't update their platform that much. As LGBTQ Nation explains, quote, while the platform removed Republicans' decades-long opposition to same-sex marriage, Chapter 8, Section 1 of the platform says Republicans will promote a culture that values the sanctity of marriage, the blessings of childhood, the foundational role of families, and supports working parents. We will end policies that punish families. The quote-unquote sanctity of marriage is a phrase that has sometimes been used as a dog whistle for heterosexual marriage, that is, marriages that are sanctified and sanctioned by evangelical churches. Trump discriminated against married same-sex couples and their families during his presidency. The GOP platform also contains numerous sections dedicated to banning LGBTQ plus content from schools and rolling back legal protections for transgender people of all ages. It also promotes religious liberty protections for Christians who discriminate against queer people, as well as a pledge to keep Christian hating individuals out of the country. In other words, they're just as hateful as ever, but when you're a gay Republican, I mean, the bar is really, really low, it's in hell. So even them changing the way that they say that they're against gay marriage, that's enough for this person to say that's a victory. You know, they're still saying that they don't want queer people to be married or same-sex couples to be married, but they're just saying it in a different way, a more coded way. But I mean, it's still the same shit. Do you expect the Supreme Court to not strike down Obergefell? We just had a vote on the Respect for Marriage Act not that long ago, and most Republicans were against it. So regardless if it's on the platform or not, that doesn't change the fact that this party is against basic civil rights for gay people. But if you're wondering why there's still queer Republicans, it's pretty simple, actually. They hate other minorities more than they love themselves. I mean, if you look at Charles's timeline, it's nonstop transphobia. If you look at the timeline of a trans Republican, for example, like Caitlyn Jenner, you'll see Islamophobia and genocide erasure. Now, if you look at the replies to her Islamophobia and genocide erasure, you'll see people that she's pandering to dead naming her and misgendering her. So conservatism, by its very nature, is about preserving the social status quo, keeping traditional values, and being queer is antithetical to that goal, which is why Republicans will never accept them no matter how, how hard they try to fit in. You can throw trans people under a bus, you can throw immigrants under a bus, you can throw everyone else under a bus. You will never be welcome in their coalition because you represent everything that they're against. But idiots like Charles Moron think that they can get them to make an exception for gay people or certain minorities, but that's just not how conservatism works. It's all bad to them, which is why gay Republicans like Lindsey Graham, for example, who hasn't come out as gay, but we all know he's gay, you know, they're subjected to a life of celibacy or secrecy, or if they come out, you know, they are subject to nonstop ridicule from their GOP peers. But I mean, look, it's their choice at the end of the day. They can choose to shill for a party that hates them in perpetuity, but that's not gonna change the fact that they'll always be as hated as the minorities that they themselves hate. You saying you're with the party and you hate other minorities isn't going to get them to suddenly accept you. That will never be the case. You are to them what trans people are to you, Charles. And so long as you perpetuate hate against others, I'm not gonna feel bad when that same hate that you spew comes back at you.
Not only can you take a load, you can take the ultimate load, and even better than that, that you find your true calling and destiny in your willingness to take the ultimate load. load, load. Have it your way, buddy. buddy, buddy.